The Sex Reproductive Principle All creating things are paired as unbalanced, equal, and opposite sex mates. Reproduction of two unbalanced mates cannot be repeated until balance has first been restored. The calm surface of the ocean may be broken up into waves, but those waves cannot be repeated until the calm surface of the ocean has been restored to the equilibrium of its rest position, even though that rest position is not maintained. Reproduction begins at the rest point where the previous wave cycle ends. Reproduction of unbalance must find a fulcrum from which the wave lever may leap into wave expression for repetition of pattern. That is what creation is, merely the repetition of pattern with added pattern forever. This is a universe of waves within waves and waves without waves, pulsing waves of dual light extending forever outward to the ends of mirrored space and reflecting back again to microscopic centers of rest from which they may again spring from rest to seek rest through dual motion, but never finding it. This is a sex-divided, opposed, two-way electric universe, which creates and voids through unbalanced pairs, but repeats or reproduces through voided ones. Sexes do not unite. Reproduction of dynamic sex pairs does not come through the union of dynamic sex pairs, but from the voidance of sex condition and with it the power of dynamic sex expression reproduction. Reproduction is not the unity of two opposite halves in one pattern thing. It is the voiding of the power of dynamic expression which all unbalanced opposites express. Reproduction is the cessation of those two unbalanced conditions which restores a balance from which similarly pattern negative forms reverse their expressions and become positive forms. Sex opposites reproduce through sex voidance. In this manner, all pattern forms repeat their patterns sequentially. All pairs of unbalanced opposites come from God, the one, and return balanced as one to God. All unbalanced pairs of separately conditioned things must first find voidance of unbalance and voidance of opposition. They must then become their own opposites to again acquire an unbalance necessary for another voidance and consequent repetition. All twos must become voided in the one in order to again become two. Reproduction of unbalanced opposites by unbalanced opposites is impossible. Opposition must first be voided. The dynamic must emerge from rest and it must be voided in rest in order that it may again become dynamic. All things seek balance. Two opposed unbalanced halves of one are forever seeking to balance their opposition. Two children on a seesaw are balanced when they are on a level with their centering fulcrum. When they are on two different levels, they are then unbalanced with their centering fulcrum. They are then dynamic. The fulcrum no longer centers them, although they are balanced in themselves. In such a position, they are obliged to move. Repetition of their motion is impossible while they are in balance with their fulcrum, but is imperative when the fulcrum no longer centers them. A sexless condition is imperative before a sex condition can be repeated. Just as all motion starts from rest and returns to rest, so does a sexed electric condition arise from a sexless one. The two sexes, therefore, cannot be united to cause reproduction. They must first be voided. Unbalanced condition and change cannot unite to reproduce unbalanced condition and change. The unbalanced condition and change must be voided in order to repeat unbalance and change. Sex opposites do not neutralize, they void. The sexes, like the two opposites of motion, cannot neutralize each other by so-called union. The dynamic cannot be neutralized. Likewise, it cannot become static, but it can be voided. 
The static condition does not then take its place, for the static condition is eternal. It was there before the dynamic condition arose. The dynamic conditions of sound, for example, arises from the static condition of silence. But sound does not become silence. Sound is voided. Silence is eternal. The dynamic conditions of sodium and chlorine do not unite to become the static condition of sodium chloride, nor are they neutralized. They must be voided before they can be repeated. Sex determined by direction of pressures. Opposites are not things. They are conditions of things. Just as heat and cold are east and west, are inward and outward, our compression and expansion cannot unite to become one, so also, so also the opposite sexes cannot unite, for they are but inward-outward pressures. Sex opposition is a difference in the pressure condition of things. The male condition is one of compression. The female is one of expansion. The sexes are thus differently conditioned by the two directions of electric pressures in accord with the two opposite desires of the Creator. The difference of conditioning makes basically similar substances appear to be different things and different substances. All things are sex divided. When, therefore, any two opposed and unbalanced sex halves of one conditioned thing balance their opposed conditioning through motion, they appear to become another thing or substance. This appearance is a deception of the senses, for they do not become another thing. They become voided, and another thing from which both are extended appears in their place. In chemistry, we call these pairs stable compounds, such as the salts. Water, for example, is avoidance of oxygen and hydrogen, for there is no oxygen or hydrogen in water. Nor do oxygen and hydrogen become water. Water is the result of the voidance of two unbalanced and opposed conditions caused by equalizing opposed pressures at static equators. Consider the static condition of the calm ocean. A storm transforms that surface into a dynamic condition. Waves which spring from the static ocean surface toward crests and troughs do not unite to reproduce another wave. They withdraw into the ocean surface. They disappear entirely and then re reappear from it in reverse to repeat the next wave. Absolute voidance of one condition must take place before repetition can follow. Voided motion is recorded in the stillness from which it was unfolded in order that it can be repeated from that record. Records of motion are seeds for repetition of motion. In the seed is desire for manifesting imaged forms of ideal. All forms are waveforms. All waveforms unfold from seed records of those waveforms. God's words. I am dual thinking mind, thinking too in action and reaction. I am dynamic thinking mind, pulsing with my dynamic thinking. With one pulse beat of my dual thinking, I build my multiple one image and bind them all as one in me. I then cancel them with the other voiding pulse. Each then is naught, but both are seed for another two. Thus I produce, void, and reproduce, generate, radiate, and regenerate in cycles without end. For behold, my imaged universe is mirrored to infinity. It is repeated to the endless end. Yet there are but multiples of three in all my universe. And again, I say to thee, two of those very three are naught but my imaginings, for my trinity is but one. The two are in me, and they are, they are of me, but they are not me, nor am I them. Well, that explains the trinity pretty good. 